Hello there and welcome friends. Today's video will be all about the very special Shadow Shaman class. I actually find Shadow Shaman to be the most stacked class in the whole game because of the numerous benefits it has, as I will show you later on. With this build your character will have quite a lot of attacks per round, when dual wielding Kukris that have extreme critical range, very high damage per hit, great armor class as well with little investment, a very high amount of saving throws, and last but not least, full spellcasting up to level 10 angel spells. That's right, because we are going to merge with angel. So as you can see, this build can do everything. From highly damaging the enemies with spells, to buffing and supporting our party, and of course, melting the enemy with your very powerful dual wielded Kukris. So with just a single Kukri attack, and we have 9 of them, our Shadow Shaman dealt more than 320 damage, and then 52 from Elemental Barrage, another 52 from all of his Angel buffs, even more damage here, and also another stack of 94 damage, because of all of the buffs we have, such as Crusader's Edge and Sunmarked and Holy Weapon. So all of these here, more than 500 damage, just from a single Kukri attack. So if you want to play an assassin angel type of character that can do everything, stay tuned for this build guide. So without further ado, let's get started. First, let us talk about what makes Shadow Shaman such a great class. Just like Wizard, Sorcerer and Cleric, it is a class that has full spellcasting, meaning up to level 9 spells. And it doesn't just end there because Shaman can actually merge with the Angel Mythic path. That's right, it's not just Oracle or Cleric that gets you merge. And if you don't know what merging does, well basically it lets you add all of your Mythic unique spells to your main spellbook while also highly increasing your spellcasting progression and caster level. So you will have access to these very powerful spells way earlier than other classes and Mythic paths. Now this alone is already extremely powerful on its own, but we have even more bonuses. Second, we also have Hexes. As I've just shown to you in my Hexes guide, Hexes can make quite a big difference during battle, both when it comes to reducing the chances of enemies hitting you to, for example, the Protective Luck Hex, or increasing your chances of hitting the enemy, and even getting more critical hits with Fortune Hex. Besides that, debuffing the enemy through Evil Eye, and of course, depending on our spirit's choice, other powerful self-buffing hexes like Battle Master for both weapon specialization and greater weapon focus feats. Third, this class also actually even has sneak attack progression, that's right. As you can see here, we have 6 whole dice of sneak attack, and we can further increase this to gear, and of course the accomplished sneak attacker feat, so at the end game you will be looking at more than 10 whole dice of sneak attack for more than 10d6 damage per each one of our hits. All of these added together is what makes this class so powerful and so stacked, with full spellcasting that allows merging, hexes, and sneak attack. Our base attack bonus is average, which is decent enough. This means that at the end game we will be looking at 15 out of 20 base attack bonus. And because this build I have prepared for you will be dual wielding, we will also get quite a lot of attacks per round. Now the last special feature of Shadow Shaman is the Shadows ability. Starting from level 4, you will be able to gain the benefit of either blur, displacement or greater invisibility for 1 minute, a number of times per day equal to your charisma modifier. This isn't that important as this build won't be focused on Charisma, but it's still a decent and powerful self buff, especially before we gain access to the very powerful Angel spells that already add 50% Consumment. Ok, so let's get started now on our Shadow Shaman progression. As far as race, I like going with Human because of the extra skill point and feat. For your background, go with Pickpocket for the bonus to Initiative. Now as far as ability scores, because this will be a dual wielding build, we of course want as high dexterity as possible. Besides that, a few constitution, some wisdom as this is our main spellcasting ability. But because this build will be focused mostly on buffing spells, and the angel mythic spells don't really have a saving throw as far as damage, you can leave this just at 14 and increase it later on with headbands and so on. The leftover points can go in charisma, just so we can make use of our shadows ability for consumers during the early game. But you can also put 2 points in strength instead, as to have a little bit more damage before we get mythic weapon finesse. The skill choices are up to you, I'll be going with trickery and stealth, after all this is a dexterity based build, and also perception. This way we can stealth ahead, unlock chests and disarm traps. Alright, so for our level 1 shadow shaman feats, we of course want weapon finesse, and also martial weapons proficiency. The reason is that 
This build will be focused on dual wielding Kukris for their extreme critical range of 15 to 20. And if you watch my Graber build guide, then you should also know there is an extremely powerful Kukri as soon as chapter 3 that has amazing synergy with the Elemental Barrage mythic ability as to highly increase our damage per hit on every single of our attacks. When it comes to Spirit, just like with Camellia, I would go with Battle, mostly because of the Battle Master Hex that grant us a lot of powerful feats for free. And you can even later get Hampering Hex as well to further reduce enemies armor class. For your Spirit Animal, go with Hair for the very high plus 4 bonus to initiative. Now Deity Choice is up to you, but I would certainly recommend you go with a good alignment, after all this build will merge with Angel, and there are some powerful spells and abilities that only work if your character is good aligned. At level 2 we will get our first Hex, and since we only get another one at level 8, this choice is going to matter. And it is also going to depend based on what party members you have and the difficulty you are playing at. If you for example already have Ember or Camellia, so other characters that can use Hexes, then you can leave Hexes like Evil Eye and Protective Luck to them. If you are the sole Hexer of your party and playing on hard and unfair, then I strongly suggest you pick Protective Luck early on. Otherwise you can also go with Ice Plant for the extra boost to Natural Armor class. And there is a certain ring that you can find early game that will improve this further. I personally prefer protective luck, because of the fact it has infinite uses, even if it's only one round level at the early game. You can easily buff your main tank with this ability right before battle starts, just by setting auto pause to enemy sighted. For a level 3 feat, go with 2 weapon fighting, after all this is a dual wielding build. At level 4, be sure to increase dexterity, and this is also what will increase on every single level afterwards. This is also when we gain our shadows ability, which as I said before can be helpful during the early game, against certain tough encounters by giving you either blur or later on displacement. For a level 5 feat, go with combat reflexes, after all as a dual wielding build focused on dexterity, you'll get quite a lot of extra attacks from attacks of opportunity, and the higher your dexterity, the more attacks of opportunity you can generate per round. At level 7, your choice is simple. Without a doubt, go with Outflank. This is always the best feat to pick at level 7 for basically any melee character with medium base attack bonus. And as usual, it's going to help when it comes to generating attacks of opportunity. Never mind the extra plus 2 bonus to attack rolls when flanking the enemy, so very powerful overall. At level 8 we finally get our second Hex, and this is going to depend based on the first Hex that you picked. If you picked Protective Luck and you are the main Hexer of your party, then be sure to go with Chant, as to increase the duration of Protective Luck by basically whatever amount you want, just as I have already shown you in my Hexing Guide. Otherwise, if you have another character that can cast either Protective Luck or Fortune Hex, then go with the Battle Master Hex, because at this level, is when you gain weapon specialization in Kukris. Now, I'll assume this character is your main Hexer, so I'll be picking Chant for now, but remember you can also pick Battle Master. At level 9 the choice is simple, improved to weapon fighting. As for your level 10 Hex, if you are your main Hexer, then certainly Fortune Hex. Just like with Protective Luck, by having Chant we can also extend this indefinitely. As for your level 11 feat, the choice is simple, improved critical, and then Kukri. Now our Kukris will have 15 to 20 critical range, which is immense, especially when you consider we are dual wielding them. For our level 12 Hex, Battle Master at last. But remember you can also pick this earlier. And of course Weapon Specialization and Kukri. For our level 13 feat, seize the moment to finish our teamwork feats that highly enhance our attacks of opportunity. For our level 15 feat, greater to weapon fighting to finish our dual wielding feats, meaning we now have 3 attacks with our offhand. Now by level 16 we have already picked the best hexes basically, but you can certainly go with something like Ice Plant for now or Hampering Hex, or even Evil Eye. You might have noticed I didn't pick Evil Eye before, this is because a Shadow Shaman is somewhat limited when it comes to their Hexes. And because this build will be focused on attacking the enemy, Evil Eye is a Hex that you can only cast during battle, unlike Fortune Hex and Protective Luck, which you can pre-buff with, so before battle starts. I don't like wasting actions during battle with Evil Eye, unless I'm a character more focused on spells like Amber and Camellia, so this is why I don't pick this for my Shadow Shaman. I'll be going with Ice Plant Hex. And because of Battle Master, we also now gain Greater Weapon Focus and Kukri. At level 17 is when I would pick the Accomplished Sneak Attacker feat. By now we have basically picked most of the feats that matter for us, so an extra die of Sneak Attack will be helpful. Now for your level 18 Hex, I'll be going with Secret and Extend spell here, but you can also pick this earlier at level 16 instead of Ice Plant. The main reason is that, as an Angel, 
merged character, we can actually eventually extend our one round level spells into 24 hours, and at this point in the game we will have enough caster level to do that, so this is why I pick extend spell here. As for your final level feat at level 19, the choice is also up to you, but I would say you have two choices here, improve the initiative, although we already have very high initiative, or to keep it simple, weapon focus, and then cook reach to increase our attack rolls. At last we are at level 20 now, so the last increase in dexterity, and also our final hex. This choice doesn't really matter that much, but I'll be going with Evil Eye. Alright, now let us talk about mythic progression for our Shadow Shaman Angel. You can certainly pick close to the heavens here, which is the angel thematic ability, but I would rather go with Instrument of Freedom, which is the Azata mythic ability, but we can pick it here just fine, there's no consequences really. This will let us enhance the attacks of all our companions, with an extra 2d6 points of holy damage, which is very powerful, especially as the uses and the duration will scale with the number of our mythic ranks. Close to the heavens will basically just give you a scaling heal, but as a merged angel we already have enough healing powers and spells. So let's pick Instrument of Freedom. Just remember you cannot cast Instrument of Freedom on yourself, but you can buff every one of your allies with it. As for your first mythic ability, I would consider Abundant Casting. After all, this build will merge with Angel, so we do want a lot of spell slots for our very powerful Angel unique spells. And this also helps when it comes to buffing during the early game. And Shaman does have a lot of powerful buffs like Bark Skin. But if you are playing on Unfair, for example, you can certainly go with Last Stand instead to increase your survivability. Your level 2 mythic feat should be simple, Weapon Finesse Mythic. After all, this is a dexterity based build. For mythic rank 3, go with Improved Abundant Casting. This is also exactly when we merge with Angel and by that point your Shaman should be around level 10, which means extra spells of level 4, 5 and 6, including very powerful Angel spells like Bolt of Justice for extreme amounts of irresistible single target damage. As I said before, merge with Shaman here, and as you can see we already gained all of our Angel spells added to our main spellbook. For Mythic rank 4, be sure to go with Improved Critical Mythic and then Kukri, so we can get times 3 Critical Multiplier, or even times 4 if you have a supporting Scald party member. And I also have a guide for Scalds that I will link down here and also to the side. As for our first Improved Sword of Heaven ability, I have already explained what all of these do basically on my Angel guide, that you can also access down here and to the side. But for your first one, go with Everlasting Flame to increase its duration. Now for Mythic Rank 5 we actually have two choices here. The first one would be Elemental Barrage, and if you want your character to have a heavier melee focus, then you can also pick Elemental Barrage at around Mythic level 3 instead of Improved Abundant Casting. After all, at Mythic Rank 3 we will be at Chapter 3, so that is when we get a very powerful Kukri that has multiple elemental enchantments on hit, meaning we will be able to easily proc elemental barrage just by having that Kukri equipped on our character. On the other hand, if you want more spellcasting slots, and at this point we will already have access to the very powerful Storm of Justice spell, go with Greater Abundant Casting. Remember you can also pick elemental barrage at Mythic rank 3 instead. For your improved Angelic Halo ability, Piercing Rays is my favorite as it helps when it comes to debuffing the enemy, for Mythic Rank 6 you have a few different choices based once again on whether you want this build to have a higher casting focus or melee focus. I wouldn't bother with Mythic to weapon fighting because as an angel we can already get extreme amounts of attack bonus, so we can make do with the penalty. Now you can actually choose Mythic Weapon Specialization as well because Battlemaster Hex will give us weapon specialization in Kukri's, but because of how powerful merged angel spells are, I like to keep a balance between melee and also Mythic spells, so I'll be going with extra Mythic ability and then Elemental Barrage. As for Sword of Heaven, go with Abolish Guile to increase our damage against certain demons. Now at Mythic Rank 7 you have some different options as well. You can pick Second Spirit and then Nature, mostly because at this point we will already be higher than level 16 and this actually gives us a pet as soon as we hit level 16. I don't really need to explain how powerful pets can be in Wrath of the Righteous, but at this point you will be at the end of chapter 4, so you might not find much of a difference in actually getting a pet so late. Besides that, nature will also give us the very powerful sea mental buff, so keep that in mind. I would personally go with Ever Ready, as to highly increase the power of our attacks of opportunity, and you can also pick Ever Ready earlier on. If you want a build to have a full melee focus, then you probably won't want to bother with, with the abundant casting line, so you can pick both Ever Ready and Elemental Barrage earlier. For another Halo ability, I like Solar Winds because it's one of the very few, if not only, ability in the game that can actually give your whole party resistance against Holy Divine Force and Unholy Damage. 
Now at Mythic Rank 8 we have already picked basically the best feats and abilities, so the choices are now up to you. You can go with Mythic Weapon Fighting, but I already find Angel has enough attack bonus as is. Mythic Weapon Focus, after all we get both of the weapon focus, so this will give us an extra plus 2 to attack bonus. And also Mythic Weapon Specialization, as we do have greater weapon specialization. Even Mythic Sneak Attacker if you want. I'll personally go with Mythic Weapon Specialization. As for Greater Sword of Heaven, be sure to go with Speed of Light here. As you can see, as a Shadow Shaman, we can even get the very powerful level 10 Angel Mythic spells. Alright, so now we are at Mythic level 9, our last Mythic for all intents and purposes. You can go with less stand, although frankly Angel has enough tanking power as it is, so I don't find it needed. Second Spirit Nature, as I said before, or even Archmage Armor to increase our armor class even further. After all, this is a dexterity based build, and you can also pick this earlier. As for our last Angelic Halo ability, I suppose you can go with either Burning Bright, but the damage isn't going to make that much of a difference, and Flame of Life for healing to our party members. Alright, so let's talk about gear for our Angel Shadow Shaman now. For the amulet, we of course want Valaxia's Magnifying Amulet for the increase to Dexterity. As for armor, because we have such high Dexterity, we can easily make do without armor, so be sure to go with Haramakis, after all, they let you fully benefit from your Dexterity bonus to armor class, and even come with some good effects like, as usual, plus 4 sacred to our saving throws from the Haramaki of Divine Guidance. The robe slot is up to you really, they aren't going to make much of a difference for this character in particular. As for belts, as usual for a dexterity based character, go with belts that increase both dexterity and also constitution. Now when it comes to the glove slot, you have a few choices here. The embroidered gloves are what I believe should be the best ones in the game, and I will soon release a video on how to get them. But to keep it simple, they are at chapter 5 in the laboratory area, after you get the key from a relu. But earlier, you can also go with Defensor's Gift Gloves for an extra damage to our offhand weapon when dual wielding, and of course the Gloves of Death Dealer to increase our sneak attack damage. As far as boots, the best boots overall, especially for Dexterity based character, are Ronex Sacrifice, after all, we gain a massive plus 8 enhancement to Dexterity, and even double bonuses from haste to our armor class, attack rolls and reflex saving throws. I'll also soon release a video on how to get it, but it's a storyteller relic that you can find in the Winter Sun area. For headbands, the best one is certainly Darkness Caress, but you can only get this very late during the game. Before that, be sure to go with headbands that increase your wisdom, or also headbands that increase both charisma and also wisdom. The goggle slots are up to you, I'm going with Piercing Gaze because of the bonus against demons, and also to perception. As for cloaks as usual, cloaks of resistance with the highest bonus you can find. For the ring slots, as you might already know, I really like the Ring of Evasion to reduce the damage from enemy spells, especially because as a dexterity character we have very high reflex. Besides that, another ring I like is the Ring of Guiding Star for the bonus to initiative, but you can pick anything you want here really. As far as bracers, we also have two choices. The bracers of Abrupt Onslaught for an increase to sneak attack damage, and the bracers of Heavy Hand for yet another bonus to our offhand Kukri when dual wielding. Now let's talk about one of the most important parts, the weapons of course. For your main hand Kukri you certainly want the Shock Flaming Corrosive Cold Iron Kukri plus 3 because of the multiple elemental enchantments it has. This makes it ideal for proccing the Elemental Barrage Mythic ability to highly increase our damage, after all just one hit with this Kukri will already be enough to proc it. Finding it is also very easy and somewhat early, you can find it at chapter 3 in the basement of the laboratory area. Now because you have to go there for your Mythic rank 4, no matter your Mythic path, chances are you will end up with this Kukri. For your offhand Kukri, the one I like is surprisingly the Radiant Kukri plus 1, because of the very rare Radiant property that adds an extra 1d6 positive energy damage on hit, and pretty much no enemy in the game is capable of resisting positive energy damage, so it's perfect for us. Remember that even though this Kukri is just plus 1, while the other main hand Kukri is plus 3, we can actually increase both of them to plus 5 weapon enhancement, so the max, just by having a mage or divine caster cast a greater magic weapon spell. Lastly we have our quick slots, and because this build can actually both attack and also cast the extremely powerful, highly damaging, irresistible angel spells, we can sure make use of them. As usual, your first powerful metamagic rod is Devouring Lust, which you can find from a crusade relic 
the attractive impulse as soon as chapter 3 starts. It lets you maximize any of your spells up to 6 times per day, so perfect for increasing Bolt and Storm of Justice during chapter 3. Besides that, a greater quicken meta magic rod, so we can actually cast 2 Bolt of Justice or 2 Storm of Justice in just a single round, for massive damage. Lastly, the Grandmaster's rod as usual, to both empower and maximize either our Bolt or Storm of Justice. And you can find these at the Bladesmith's workshop area during chapter 5 for Finian's last quest. Now let's talk about spell allocation for this build, after all, it can both attack and also cast spells with ease. As I said before, it can merge with Angel and this is what you should do for a massive increase to your spellcasting power. You will even gain level 10 mythic spells whenever you hit 28 caster level, basically during chapter 5. Now I have already talked about all of the best angel spells in my angel mythic spells guide that I have linked down below and also to the side here. But let's talk about which spells to allocate. For level 10 of course, Army of Heaven, Phoenix Gift, and you can also go with Rekindle for mass revive. For level 9, Fortress of the Faithful no doubt for the massive buffing. The same for Sun Form to highly increase our defenses. For Sight is a decent buff as well, the same for Winds of Vengeance, and lastly, a lot of mass heals. For level 8, you certainly want to basically just spam Storm of Justice. It is, after all, the best damaging spell in the game, as far as area of effect damage. For level 7, we have a lot of spells. Legendary Proportions, if you don't have another character capable of casting it. Ice Body is paramount to give us immunity to critical hits. And of course, Ward Against Weakness Communal for all of the many immunities but most importantly, ability damage and drain, and fatigue and exhaustion. Besides that, Sir Mark is one of the best buffs in the game, because of the extreme damage it adds to every single one of your attacks, and as we are dual wielding, we get a lot of them. You can even buff your party members, pets included with this. Lastly, we have some two situational spells. Radiant Ground can actually give you a lot of healing, but will also affect enemies, and this can be useful whenever you are facing either undead, or enemies with positive energy affinity such as Death Snatchers, including the very powerful Playful Darkness boss, who will be instantly defeated just by stacking Radiant Grounds on the ground. Wall of Light can also be decent against all evil enemies, but be advised that this will also hit your own evil allies. For level 6, the main spell is of course Bolt of Justice, a single target version of Storm of Justice. Greater the spell magic, as a merged Shaman Angel will have very high caster level, to easily dispel bosses that have a lot of buffs. Stone Skin Communal is great of course, and Aegis of the Faithful, which is the single target version of Fortress of the Faithful. And as soon as you get this, you will certainly want every single one of your main tank or frontline characters to be warded with it. For level 5 spells, Animal Growth to enhance our pets. Breath of Life can also be useful when it comes to reviving recently dead party members. K Fangs is cheesy as always and extremely overpowered, especially when you are aided by a paladin and have greater enduring spells and also Cleansing Flames. You can actually get this for a huge area of effect damage before Storm of Justice and Bolt of Justice, but be advised it will also hit your allies, although for very minimal damage, and even heal them of quite a lot of status ailments. I think the only thing it doesn't heal really is level drain. For level 4 spells, Greater False Life for temporary hit points, Protection from Energy Communal as our Aegis and Fortress of the Faithful only give resist energy to our party members, not protection from energy. You certainly want fire, cold and also lightning. Pure form can be useful as a mid-game heal to also restore negative effects on yourself, and of course restoration to remove negative levels. For level 3 spells, be sure to pick Magical Vestment as your domain slot to increase your armor class, but the main spell here is Shield from Demon Kind. Even though shamans do not get Shield of Fate by default, they can just use this very powerful angel buff instead. It actually gives you higher deflection to armor class than Shield of Faith, and even grants you a damage shield, which can add up for quite a lot of damage as it is irresistible damage. You can also use Soothing Mud to remove ability damage during the early game from all your party members, and of course resist energy communal before you have access to Aegis and Fortress of the Faithful. For level 2, Bark Skin as usual for armor class, and also aid for temporary hit points. Shamans, unlike clerics or angels, also get false life, which you can buff yourself with for temporary hit points, and this does stack with greater false life later on. As far as level 1 spells, shaman spells aren't that useful. Early game you certainly want cure light wounds, unbreakable heart to remove and become immune to confusion effects, bless and also remove fear. Now let's talk about how to play as this build, and it is very simple, especially if you have already used a character like Amelia, 
who has spellcasting, can also attack and use hexes. During the early game, you certainly want to empower your party members with buffs, like Bark Skin, Aid, and also save some level 1 spells for healing, with Cure Light Wounds. You can also use Blast for an early morale bonus to attack rolls for all our party members, and this can also remove the very annoying Vrock Demon damage over time effect that they love spamming. Of course, during your early levels you won't be nowhere near as powerful as here, so send your tank, in this case a pet for example, ahead, to properly draw the enemy's attention to them. After that, send your Shadow Shaman ahead to flank the enemy Strike. and inflict a massive amount of damage with his sneak attacks. Remember, as a Battle Shaman, you will have the Enlarge Person spell as soon as level 1, and with this, your Shadow Shaman can get reached, so he can attack from the back of your tanks, meaning your chances of being hit are even lower. Yes, this will reduce your dexterity, but frankly, it's not that much of a penalty, and the defense boost you can get early on can make up for it. As far as Hexes, if you picked Protective Luck early on, then be sure to cast this on your tanks before battle starts, especially after you get the Chant Hex, so you can extend the duration. At the early game this is not a build focus for tanking, so be aware of that. As you increase in levels you also gain more powerful spells, especially buffing spells. But as soon as you merge with Angel, that's when the fun really starts. After all you'll get the extremely powerful Angel spells. And frankly, even if you don't want to melee, at that point all you have to do is spam both of Justice and later Storm of Justice, with a side of Cleansing Flames. But of course we can just melee the enemies as well especially through the aid of powerful buffs like Aegis of the Faithful to highly increase our defenses, Stone Skin Communal, Sun Mark for a massive increase to our damage, and later Sun Form. Shamans also get the very powerful Enemy Spain ability. It only lasts for a single minute, but you can use it a lot of times per day. Remember that, by default, Bane basically increases your weapon enhancement by plus 2, and also grants it an extra 2d6 damage and in the case of Shaman, this will work against every single enemy in the game, no matter their type, as their Bane is basically a general Bane. The best thing about this is that if your weapon already has the Bane ability, and we can do that by casting the Divine Crusader's Edge spell, the damage will then double to 4d6, very powerful. Now remember, you can also pick both the Enduring and Greater Enduring Mystic abilities if you want your buffs to last 24 hours, but I think as an Angel you already get quite enough duration on them, really especially the mass buffs that tend to last either 1 minute or later on 1 hour level. And because we picked the extend spell feat from a shaman hex, we can already extend our high level 1 round level spells just fine. Ok, so this was it everyone, I hope you've enjoyed this video on how to build a shadow shaman, the most stacked class that we have in the game so far. You are sure to have quite a lot of fun with it, after all it can do everything, from attacking, to buffs, debuffs and even spell damage. Remember to comment down below if you have a different way of building your Shadow Shaman or have a suggestion for my next build guide. Please be sure to support the channel by liking and subscribing, thank you for watching and see you next time friends!